I say this every day, no matter what. May every grenade on earth be emptied of all explosives and placed at the top of a shaman staff to be used as a Palo Santo holder. So every day, a crazy fucking shaman can light that Palo Santo, breathe in that sacred smoke, and say a prayer for a thousand years of peace. And if you're not familiar with Palo Santo, it comes from a 90-year-old tree in the Yucatan Peninsula, and the tree usually dies at around age 90, and then the locals will harvest the wood, and they will make all kinds of things out of Palo Santo, including essential oils, but the Palo Santo, if you want to call it a smudge stick or like an incense stick, it's just an amazing smell. And interesting thing about Palo Santo is that the sesquiterpenes have all kinds of benefits for the endocrine system. Uh, it's antibacterial, antimicrobial, antifungal, and sesquiterpenes in particular found in cedarwood oil, sandalwood oil, and Palo Santo have amazing strengthening adaptogenic properties in the human body. And Palo Santo is used in plant medicine ceremonies, which is part of the reason I'm rolling solo, because it seems that the non-judgmental Christian community wants to label anything having to do with Eastern philosophy or chakras or plant medicine as demonic. And a lot of people that have done various plant medicine ceremonies have encountered a feminine intelligence. And in the ayahuasca community, she is called Mama Aya. A lot of people refer to that spirit as Mother Earth. And in my humble opinion, I think that if there is something that grows out of the ground or comes from an animal, uh, maybe a certain toad, that activates something within this vehicle that allows us to transcend suffering, to transcend unimaginable pain and suffering, post-traumatic stress disorder, childhood trauma, anger, impatience, depression, anxiety, social anxiety. We become a different version of ourselves and it's the upgraded version. And I don't know any demons that want to love you and help you and make you better to make you a better husband, better father, better, better boss, better employee, better friend, better brother, better sister. So I think that these things are here for a reason. I think that these things have been banned for a reason. It the whole thing is fascinating to me. It it really is and a whole multiple episodes could be devoted to understanding the history of various plant medicines and shamanic ceremonies and the origins. You know, I've read certain things about mushrooms, you know, being used 30,000 years ago um, in different aboriginal tribes. And do we really know the true story of history? You know, it's at this point, everything is sort of up for debate. But before we go any further, I have to remind you that the Unchained Earth podcast is a parody satire based podcast where I live in a science fiction based reality that is not based in actual reality that we all think we know. And the things that are going to be discussed in this podcast are revolving around the construction of a science fiction comic book called Unchained Earth, where Earth is under the control of interdimensional nefarious entities that have hijacked the consciousness of those we think are our leaders and have basically taken control of every aspect of the system we know as life and society all across the plane. Unchained Earth is not a spinning ball globe model reality. It is actually a flat stationary plane that seems to go on infinitely in all directions. And at the very center of Unchained Earth is maybe the tree of life and maybe an entrance point to the subterranean worlds that supposedly a certain admiral discovered way back when, right around the time that 
in the other reality, there happened to be a declassified government operation called Majestic 12 and also Operation High Jump. And I'm going to take bits and pieces from that and modify it for the comic book. But of course, none of that really happened because everything I talk about is completely imaginary and any references that are made to any celebrities, politicians, professional athletes or historical figures are purely speculation based in humor, based in parody. I do not profess to know anything about anything. So don't take anything that is said on this podcast seriously. So a lot of people are freaking out right now. A lot of people are freaking out about everything. I mean, we could go down a laundry list of items that would basically just be a bunch of black pills to make people negative and fearful. And that's exactly what the system wants. I think there's only one thing that I'm concerned about a little bit, but I feel like the good guys win in the end, no matter what. Um, I also grew up in a generation where we watched G.I. Joe and He-Man and the original Transformers and Airwolf and A-Team and Dukes of Hazard, and the good guys always won. The good guys always won. And so that was just programmed in my mind as a child that the good guys will always win. And I'm not going to give that up. I'm not going to let that go because if I go down that road, then that's black pill the path of the black pill, which is everything is negative. And then you get paranoid and it's like at that point, what's, what is the point? And I've been there and it's ridiculous. And I mean, you can be the most skilled doomsday prepper. You can have an unlimited budget and you can have an underground fortress, but at the end of the day, you need a generator and air filtration. Don't you? And so you could be nice and tucked away in your bunker. And what happens when someone finds the air vent and decides to get a bulldozer and bulldoze a bunch of dirt over your air vent? Sooner or later, you're going to run out of air and you're going to have to open up that blast door and come out and fight. So no one has it all figured out. And at the end of the day, I think the reptilian overlords probably have their deep underground bases because they know that enough of humanity is awakening to where there's going to be a shift in the field. There is a shift happening in collective consciousness right now. And the thing that does not get a lot of attention, well, before I go there, what am I worried about? Here's what I find odd. And I stumbled upon something called the fabricated entity theory. And so just hear me out. So certain statistics show that 11 million illegal aliens have crossed the border in the last eight to 10 years into the United States, 11 million. And that might be a low number. Of the 11 million, 10 million are military age males. They came here with no women, no children. They're alone. And there's 10 million of them. My question is this, were there really 20 million men or 10 million men and 10 million women that, that mated and created these 10 million military age males that all happen to come from various countries that are hostile to the United States. And they all happen to be here around the same time. And they're all around the same age. Did they all just leave their little village? Like, how did they get the notification? How did they... Where's the campaign in these other countries to get these people out? So here's where I'm going with this. The fabricated entity theory says that we they were created, that they were created in a lab. Many of them are 85 IQ subhuman cannibals. Many of them supposedly come from countries where cannibalism is common. These are people who, in their countries, raping women and children is a common thing. And over here, I hope we still consider that atrocious. I know I consider that atrocious and something that's unforgivable and should be justification for the death penalty. But we live in such a pussified society 
that the bad guys commit these crimes and especially the ones against children. And then they wind up with a slap on the wrist and an ankle monitor or the ones that do go to prison, get cable and internet and a commissary and medical care and three meals a day and all this fucking shit where in El Salvador crime is down 96% because they actually have real prisons where they bring the pain. If you commit a crime, if you're one of those gang members in El Salvador and you get caught, all of your rights are gone and you're never getting out. You're never getting out. And that's why everything changed. Now, the real question is, did they all just move to the US? And I think there's probably some of that involved, right? But the fabricated entity theory is a trip because Cloning technology is real, right? And there is plenty of evidence that this has been going on for a long, long time, all the way back to the 1970s where they cloned a sheep. So imagine where the technology could be now. And is there a factory somewhere? Is there a laboratory cranking out all of these 85 IQ, completely controllable slaves that are being are being armed with clothing, a cell phone, a five thousand dollar Visa gift card, and a plane ticket to anywhere they want to go in the country. You're telling me that all of these individuals are not linked up on Telegram or Signal or some sort of messaging app? Like, what are they doing? What are they doing? Because they're not they're not going to go get jobs. Some of them are, but most of them are not. And they're they're staying in hotels. They have phones, they can communicate, they have money, they can buy food, so they're surviving. What are they waiting for? And this is what I'm concerned about. This is the on- really the only thing I'm concerned about. It seems that a big conflict in, in the Lebanon, Iran, Israel area is inevitable at this point. The writing is on the wall and the warmongers are beating the drums and the fleets are being deployed and... You know, squadrons are being deployed, and so it's escalating. And if there's an all-out war over there and U.S. forces domestically are depleted and all of our money, we're going to print a bunch more money and, you know, we got to go to war because America's got to be the police department of the whole world and everyone gets our money except our veterans and, you know, the people that really need it in this country. So we're just going to print money and give it to everyone else, and then we're going to have inflation here. So the hardworking individuals that are barely making it as it is, and they're good people with children and mortgages and car payments and insurance payments, and now their grocery bills up 40%, and people are taking HELOCs out of their house to survive, and it's crazy out there. But everyone else gets our money. So all our money goes over there, and there's this huge war, another war, because that's what the reptiles love is they just love destruction and death and you know how many how much collateral damage can we create because that's what they love they love to harvest the louche and war is the best way to do it other than the super bowl the superb owl so the forces are depleted we're over there we're fighting in this conflict and then all of a sudden you got 10 million soldiers here that have invaded that have communication and they've been fed, they've been rested, they've been waiting. And what happens when the United Nations activates these 10 million soldiers and arms them up and gives them body armor and ballistic helmets and MRAPs and explosives and rifles and rations and equipment. And then they're going to patrol the streets to quell the social unrest that's happening because of the food riots and the fact that all of this fake money is leaving the country while this country is slowly burning to the ground or maybe not that slow. So if there's that type of upheaval, what you're seeing in the United Kingdom right now is you've got the Muslims are running rampant and they are destroying Great Britain. And what does the authority do in Great Britain? What do what does the police do in the United Kingdom? They defend the Muslims and allow them to physically assault white Britons 
So the British are getting smashed. The cops are allowing it. And anyone who's considered far right, who expresses any discontent with being invaded because they, they are being invaded and they're, and the invaders are being supported by the authorities. So anyone who speaks up against this is doing jail time. But then these pieces of shit rape kids and get out of jail in six months or maybe not even go to jail because of some bullshit excuse. So it just seems that all of this is orchestrated. None of this is a mistake. The world is a stage. It's all designed. It's all intentional. And that's really the only thing that I'm concerned about is if, if there's an all out war and we go to defend Israel against Iran Russia and China get involved and then it's going to be a fucking shit show and that's not cheap. And then there's less money in the country and maybe there is social unrest. And then what do they do? What does the media do? The media supports the UN peacekeepers because, Oh, it's the UN. They're here to keep the peace and keep you safe. But you know, meanwhile, these are fucking cannibals that rape children and women. That's who these people are. These are the countries that they come from. These are dangerous fucking people, and we have been invaded. We have been invaded. It has been allowed. We have been overthrown. So with that said, I don't think I give a fuck because it's not on my doorstep. And if you maintain a calm and confident attitude about this and you're strategic you have to think about how many other people are out there that think about home defense and security and preparedness like you do. And you just have to keep your wits about you because there's no sense in getting black pilled about all this shit. The only thing you can do is stay calm, stay cool, train hard, eat clean, protect your family, do what you got to do day to day and be as successful financially as possible because money equals freedom. And unfortunately, when you go down the spiritual path, you're going to meet people that have an aversion to money. I was linked up with two guys who I think are great guys, and I, I still think you should follow their content, but both of them have a severe aversion to money, a severe aversion to money. They reject money. They know they need it to survive, but they say money is evil. Money's evil, right? No, money's energy. Money is energy. And so money is going to magnify who you are as a person. So if you are a good person and you want to make a positive difference in the world, think for a minute what you would do with a billion dollars because I would be fucking Batman. If I had a billion dollars, I would be fucking Batman and I would go protect these children and there would be street justice issued out for all these motherfuckers that were hurting children and thinking they could get away with it because we live in a soft, pussified society that is allowing this and we have insane, lunatic politicians saying that they're going to classify pedophilia as a sexual orientation that is fucking atrocious. And I can't even believe that a human being with a heart and a soul could even formulate a fucking sentence like that to justify the crime, the heinous crime that that really is to take the sanctity and innocence of a child is the most demonic act that can be committed in the physical world in which we live. That is an act that not only is unforgivable, but it should be instant justification to forfeit the life of the one who committed the act. That life should instantly be taken away because the only conclusion that you can come to when you look at a human being that would do something that heinous to a child is that they are possessed by a demon. So in the world that I live in, in my science fiction fucking based reality where I live, those are the fucking demons, not the people who are trying to 
transcend the darkness because they they were good little citizens and they they towed the line and they saw the doctors and they took all the pills in the orange bottles and they went to all the psychiatry appointments or counseling appointments or maybe they were even hospitalized and nothing worked and instead of taking a swan dive off a bridge or putting a gun in one's mouth and pulling the trigger they decided to go the road less traveled and see if a plant or an herb or a fungus or some bark mixed with a leaf would be the fucking answer they were looking for and so many people found that answer. And that is not demonic. That is not demonic. I will debate you until the end of time that, that what is demonic is the entities or the individuals putting the chemicals in the food, putting the fluoride and all the other chemicals in the water. There's now lithium in birth control pill residue in municipal drinking water along with 60 other chemicals you can't pronounce so you can go to ewg.org and you can type in your county and you can see exactly what is in your municipal drinking water supply so i hope we're not at a level here where we need to talk about why drinking tap water is bad i mean you should be walking around with something like this a gallon of water every day squeeze a lime in there you know put a big scoop of sea salt shake it up real good and you've got yourself an electrolyte drink like but where's the water coming from over here there's a whole house filtration system that takes out the majority of the contaminants and but still, it only takes out like 40% of the fluoride. So then that water goes to the under sink triple stage RO system. And if I have a bunch of time on my hands, I'll take the RO water and I'll put it in the distiller. Because distilled water is 7.0 neutral. It's, it's automatically neutral. So if you add lime or lemon and salt, you make your own alkaline water. That's the, what's beautiful about distilled. And then reverse osmosis water is slightly acidic when it hits oxygen. I think the pH is like 6.0. So you've got to add some salt. You've got to add some lemon, you know, organic lemon juice, squeeze a lime in there. But I, I don't know where you guys are down the rabbit hole. I don't know how far deep down the nutritional rabbit hole you've gone. But I mean, these are the demons, people like spraying the shit in the sky and people today with all of the mainstream media information about cloud seeding and, you know, the, the horrible torrential rainstorm that happened in Dubai and all the flooding, they're openly admitting cloud seeding. They're proud of it. It's mainstream shit with all this stuff about the technology to modify the weather with an aerosol disbursement system on aircraft people will still look at you and tell you that chemtrails are fake right that word is is not a real word that's not a real word it's called stratospheric aerosol geoengineering and there's you know 30 or more patents for that you can look them up on google patents aerosol delivery systems on aircraft uh, you can also look at the singularity is near by ray kurzweil and he talks about something called barium foglet nanotechnology. So a, a, a barium foglet nanotechnology is fourth dimensional programmable nanotech that is dispersed with an aerosol delivery system out of an aircraft and you can program the nanotech. So it's like blue beam on steroids where you can be on your computer and create any kind of image you want in the sky with this fourth dimensional programmable nanotech. They're microscopic aerosol, like they float in the air. They, 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 they merge with the clouds, they become clouds, and then you can program them to create any shape you want in the sky. And I think that they're probably going to go uh, full retard and try to do blue beam 
with that tech. Um, these are the ones who are putting all the depravity in the public education system. These are the ones that are setting interest rates. These are the ones that are doing fractional reserve banking where, you know, I'm going to deposit $1 in the bank. And then all of a sudden the bank can make up that they have 99 more dollars to loan out. It's, it's such a, the whole thing, people, NASA, $68 million a day for a fucking pool and the worst CGI ever. That's where we're at because, you know, you can't, you can't have an iPhone picture of earth from a space station. I mean, it's, it's all of it. It's all of it. And so what are the directions that, that we're going to go in for this crazy comic book we're working on? What are the directions? Well, when you peel back all the layers of the onion about what we think we know about earth and what we think we know about the way that this society functions and who's really running the show here, when you start to go down the road of the elite, the decision makers, the controllers, and you look at the degeneracy and the depravity that they are involved in, it is... Stanley Kubrick got in a lot of trouble for eyes wide shut. And that's the tip of the iceberg. You know, when you, when you look into elite hunting parties, when you look into what the lead guitarist of Scorpions told TMZ about the stuff that the snuff film that was being shot at one of these mansion parties he went to these Epstein Island is the tip of the iceberg. Okay. There's 800,000 children that go missing every year in Unchained Earth, okay? The comic book. 800,000. They go missing, never to be seen again. And adrenochrome is a real thing. And if you've made it this far, you know how it's supposedly harvested. And... You also know that they found human DNA in the meat of major fast food burger restaurant chains. Human DNA. So where are the bodies disposed of? And what are they feeding you? And what is HEK-296? HEK-296 is human embryonic kidney cells. Comes from a fetus an aborted fetus and it is a flavor additive you need to look up what foods contain hek 296 because the theory is that if you introduce human dna to the population into the food and the humans begin to consume the dna of other humans will they begin to get a craving for that. That's a question we all need to ask. Is that a part of it? Is it like Soylent Green where these psychopaths see a future in which, in which the liquefied remains of the dead are fed to the living, just like the Matrix? 